In this system design interview question, we are asked to design a messaging app similar to WhatsApp, while a real interview might focus on one or more functionalities of this app. In this video, we'll take a high-level overview of the system architecture, and then you could explore specific areas in more depth if needed. Let's first narrow down the scope with some clarifying questions to the interviewer, as designing the entire WhatsApp platform in an hour is unrealistic. So the primary use case of this app will be sending messages, checking and receiving messages, and also reading messages and marking them as read. We will not cover group messaging, only one-to-one -one messages, and from content type we will cover text messages only, so we will not support images or videos. From non-functional requirements of this system, first let's talk about the scale, which is how large will the system be and how many messages do we handle. For this, let's say 10 billion messages are sent every day and we are aiming to double that within a year. In terms of availability, we want this to be highly available and always operational. And for the system latency, we want this to happen almost instantly, so the API target is 100 milliseconds. Now let's move on to the estimation of data. With 10 billion messages sent every day, we have roughly 10 billion messages divided by the seconds per day, which is 115,000 messages per second. And doubling that within a year means we should plan at least for 240,000 messages per second. So assuming each message is 200 bytes on average, the daily storage will be 10 billion messages times that 200 bytes, which is 2 terabytes of data. And yearly storage with growth will be 2 terabytes times 365 days and times 2, which is 1.5 petabytes of data. It's important to note that we calculated the averages, but systems need to handle peak traffic, which could significantly be higher than the average MPS that we calculated. So we might need to scale up based on the peak times. Now let's move on to the high-level API design. We'll likely use a RESTful API style for this system. And here is a breakdown of possible endpoints. The first one will be to send a message, which is a POST request to slash messages. The request body should include the recipient's ID and the message content. And the successful response will be 200, which returns a unique identifier of this message. Otherwise, we would have error calls like 400, which is missing parameters, or 500 in case of server errors. The next endpoint will be for checking for new messages, which is a GET request to slash messages, and the response for this is either 200 with an array of unread messages, or 204 if there are no messages unread. The third endpoint will be for getting a single message, which is GET to messages slash ID of that message, and it will return us the message with 200 success code, or 404 if the message is not found. And lastly, we would need a mark as red endpoint, which is patched to messages slash ID of the message. And the successful response will be 200, marking this message as red. And the 404 will indicate that the message was not found. So with this API design, we can now move on to high-level system design. The primary interface for users will be the mobile app, which is the iOS or Android app on the phone. This app handles sending and receiving messages, contact management, and conversations. And all of the requests from this app go through a load balancer, which is for distributing traffic across multiple servers evenly, and this will also improve our application's reliability. So all of these requests will go to the API servers. These servers will handle the RESTful APIs we outlined earlier, managing messaging logic, and these API servers could be stateless, if possible, and this way we can scale out horizontally and add more servers as traffic grows. And it's important to note that WhatsApp-like apps heavily rely on WebSockets for real-time communication, so these chat servers will maintain persistent WebSocket connections with the mobile app, and when a message arrives, it can be instantly pushed to the recipient's device. Next, we will have a message distributor, and the main purpose of this is to decouple API servers from direct database writes, which is especially important for handling our high-volume writes. And the message queue such as Kafka or RabbitMQ will be a great fit here. So here is how it will work. The API server will receive a send message request and it will place the message on the queue and return a success acknowledgement to the client. And then a separate worker process will asynchronously read from the queue and write this to the database. We agree that eventual consistency is acceptable and this makes SnowSQL a scalable choice for the high message volume. Let's consider two strong options. First one is Cassandra, which is a wide column store known for its scalability and availability, and it also has high write performance. 
So this means it will be especially good if you anticipate high write volumes with simpler read patterns. And the second option is DynamoDB, which is a fully managed key value and document database offered by AWS. And the advantage of this will be if you want a minimal maintenance database solution that scales easily, this can be handled by AWS and not by us. But it's also important to shard, meaning horizontally partition the data, since no single can handle our 1.5 petabyte storage needs. But how would we shard and partition this data, and how do these API servers know where to request that data from? Well, we could partition this based on user ID. All messages involving a user will reside in the same shard, and our API servers have two potential ways to locate the data. The first one is consistent hashing ring, and with this method, the data location can be determined based on the partition key, and this allows API servers to directly route requests to the correct database shard. Another option is metadata service, a separate service which will keep a mapping of partition keys and shard locations. And with this method, API servers will query this service first, then make the database call. So this outlines the primary system architecture for a messaging app like WhatsApp, now let's summarize and examine the potential bottlenecks in our current system and areas for improvement. The first one is database writes, so the high write volume is a potential bottleneck in our system. And for this we need to make sure that we are sharding the data correctly, optimizing message queues and also optimizing the database choice here. Next one is end-to-end -end encryption. The WhatsApp model heavily emphasizes security. And we don't have any encryption in our current system, so implementing such end-to-end -end encryption would be a crucial discussion in interview. Next, we didn't cover group chats, and this feature will bring additional complexity to message routing and also storage. And lastly, we didn't implement media handling, so we can implement a system for handling image and video uploads, potentially using compression here and multiple storage sizes for thumbnails. If you'd like to learn more about each component that we discussed here, I have a detailed system design interview concepts tutorial where I go over each of these in more detail there.